Shabbat Shalom, dear friends, friends of Biafra and lovers of freedom. I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you, wherever you are on this planet Earth. Today is the Shabbat day, the day the Most High Yahweh of hosts has made. He has ordained and blessed and sanctified. He has made it the perpetual covenant between him and the children of Israel forever, even as we have come today to do that which the Most High has ordained. May His name and His name alone be praised and glorified forever in the name of Yahweh Shai, our Messiah. Hallelujah. My name is Uzo Chuku, and today we shall be treating Law 20, um, Law 47 to law 67 which has to do with psychics magic witchcraft and child sacrifice these laws we will be talking about them so that we understand what the most the what the most high actually wants from us his children so that we know we will not go astray I won't be taking much of our time in today's um, Shabbat program. We'll be going straight to the program. Uh, there was a program I just presented shortly. I said uh, the new radio Biafra television in the United States of America. No, sorry. It was a new radio station in the United States. Uh, we've um, talked about that, so I'm not going to talk about it here anymore. So we'll be going straight to today's um, Shabbat program. We'll say a little prayer, then our sister Judea, the founder of Rise of the Chosen Ministry, an educative ministry, will take us through the laws so that we can really understand what the most I require of us. And also have it in mind that 613 laws are the laws are not actually 613 laws so there are adjustments which we have to make today because they are no more relevant because we have no temple to do those things well, we are not in our land to do those things and there are laws which Judaism, Judaism have, have added because of their own selfish interest but not according to the scripture but according to their own way of life so we have to be careful so here on Biafra television we are not sentimental that's why we are not backing up Christians or Judaism or Islam we just say the truth how it is because the most High in the first instance never gave us a religion he never gave us a religion and I've told us earlier that if we want to know the meaning of religion we should go to the letter of James there he said a pure and true religion acceptable before the most high he is taking care of the orphans the widows the less privileged in summary it simply means that religion is an act of love it is charity so religion is not an institution formed by man e.g. Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Hindu, whatever it is call it and that's why all these things all these institutions I've mentioned they are all registered as charity organizations so religion is an act of showing love but the most high gave us not a religion but a way of life governed by his precepts and commandments and that's why he said in Ecclesiastes 12 13 let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear the most high and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man so there is no death on the cross that abolish any law never 
never ever anybody tell you that because our Messiah Yahweh Shai, the one we've been taught to call Jesus Christ, died on the cross, therefore every sin, I mean every commandment from the time of Abraham down to the time of Moses and so on are now abolished. Never. Don't believe such people because they want to destroy you. The devil only comes to kill, steal and destroy. So we have to be careful. So without taking much of our time, we're going to say a little prayer and then move into the program proper. Our Father and our King, we bless your holy name. We adore you because there is none like you. Ancient of days, we, your children, we've come before you to worship you in truth and in spirit as you have commanded us to do. Even as we have embarked, Father, in the propagation of your laws, your commandments, your words, which is life and which is spirit, which are spirit. Father, we pray that they will bear fruit in us even as we keep your commandments. Father, that our lives will never remain the same. We pray that all what we are going to discuss or learn today, Father, shall bear fruit in us in the mighty name of Yahweh Shai. We pray for Ali Damazun Namdi Kanu that the gates of hell shall never triumph over him. Father, I pray you that have ordained him for this cause. Father, we see him through. Father, just as you handled Jeremiah, Father, Jeremiah was never killed by the oppressors, but he was delivered, rather. Therefore, Father, I pray, Unam the Kano, your chosen one will never be killed by his oppressor. Father, we pray that you will use him as a terrible weapon against his enemies and the enemies of Biafra. Father, just as you caught Jeremiah and you put your word in his mouth and tell him this day I've given you the power to uproot, to destroy, to build, and to pull down. Father, I pray that same anointing that you poured and bestowed on Jeremiah, Father, you will replicate and double it in the life of Ali Damas and Amdekano, so that at the end, Biafra will be restored and all glory will go to you. For those that are still under medical treatment, those that were shot by the devilish security agencies of Nigeria, Father, we pray that you grant them quick recovery, that you will rescue them and give them good health of mind and body. Those that are still under their custody, Father, we pray you will liberate them because you have come to set the captive free. And whoever you have set free is free indeed. Father, receive all glory. Bless those, Father, that have lost in the process of this restoration. That you, Almighty Father, will replenish everything they've lost just as you did to Job. In the mighty name of Yahweh Shai Amashiach, we have prayed. Hallelujah. 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 Now I hand over this program to our sister, Judea. Welcome back and thank you for joining me in the study of the commandments. We're beginning this video at law number 47. There are two videos prior to this one, so please begin there if you haven't already. My blog site goes into much greater detail, so please check it out at riseofthechosen.blogspot.com. We're also discussing how Judaism has altered the commandments such that the number 613 is actually much less. So for those of you who say 613 laws are impossible to keep, please know that according to my studies, 613 is not the correct number. We're in the process of finding out how many there really are, and you and I are both on this journey together. 
We've seen how Judaism has repeated some laws and changed the scriptural reference for others. We've also seen how commandments have been added that have absolutely no scriptural reference at all, which is the main reason why we as Hebrew Israelites should not follow the religion of Judaism. I'm using an asterisk system for my own records, just so you know what they mean. I'm placing one asterisk by the laws that need to be completely omitted, two asterisks by the laws that need to be changed to fit their scriptural reference, or their scriptural reference needs to be changed to fit the law, and three asterisks by the laws that can no longer be kept today. They are valid laws, but can't be observed today. Keep in mind, the renewed covenant of Jeremiah 31 and the grace that has entered in is another reason why some laws can no longer be kept, such as law number 45, the commandment to kill the false prophet. Forgiveness and mercy now meets that false prophet where punishment used to. Law numbers 26 and 35 are two other laws where the scripture reference was changed because the list of 613 had the incorrect scripture. So although I didn't discuss those two laws in the previous video, you will find commentary for them on my blog. So far, we have seven laws that have been changed. Number 8, 10, 12, 26, 31, 33, and 35, including the two that I've just mentioned, number 26 and 35. Four laws that have been omitted, number 17, 28, 38, and 42 because they were added by Judaism, and one law that can no longer be kept, law number 45, because we are living in the renewed covenant era. I hope you guys are taking notes. I know laws are not necessarily the most exciting things to learn, but if you're excited about obedience and truly stepping into the blessings of Deuteronomy 28, you should be ready to learn. So let's continue on with more laws. We're still in the category of the laws of idolatry and paganism, starting with law number 47. We're getting into magic, witchcraft, and divination. There are a group of laws that focus on psychics and mediums and such, and I want to focus on those laws first. We're commanded in law number 47 not to perform av, and in law number 48 not to perform yodoni. Two words we don't hear often, but av refers to communicating with the dead, and Yodoni refers to magic. There was a pagan practice called Nishush, or practicing almonds, where in the Av, a person claimed to communicate with the dead through his armpit. The Yodoni would use a bone to project a voice, and people would ask a question, and the performer of the magic would answer through these mediums, via the bone and through the armpit. So we're looking at the performance of magic, keyword performance very thin line between the word magic and demonic activities by the way and what you think is a game may not be if a demon can access you through the activity you're doing it's not good to partake it's the equivalent of palm reading or tarot card reading people turn to these mediums for answers that only the most high can give and this is the problem faith is put into magic these two laws 47 and 48 not to perform Av and Yudoni link with laws 65 and 66, not to consult Av and Yudoni. So although we don't see these specific pagan practices today with the bone and the armpit, in the biblical days they were very common. They were performance tactics and they are prohibited. So we're commanded not to do it or consult with someone who is doing it. That being said, why was this commanded if it was just a silly performance? What's the threat, right? The reality is the spirit realm is very real. Spirits do communicate, good and bad spirits. Can you control which one is communicating with you? Are you guarded enough by the spirit of the Most High to prevent the wrong spirit from connecting with you? And that's the reason for the law. Proof that this is real can be found in 1 Samuel chapter 28, verse 7 through 20. When the very much alive Saul speaks to a very much dead Samuel through what we would call today a medium. It's a very interesting passage. If you've never ran across it, please take the time to read it. Although it was an abomination, Saul was still able to speak with Samuel who was dead. 
So there's no question that it's possible to communicate with spirits. There are plenty of spiritual gifts, which we do not understand, which may not be gifts at all. And that's why the law was given for our own protection. And so we don't go chasing after spirits for the guidance that only the Most High can give. It's easy to become mesmerized by the spirit realm and know the unknown, but no being, spiritual or otherwise, is more trustworthy than the Most High. This is a very controversial topic because many of you may have a gift, which you would call the discernment of the spirit, where you are able to know or have a knowing, whether you call it a hunch or an instinct, it's a knowing, a revelation. And you may have had dreams or visions of a loved one communicating with you, and they may have had good intentions of helping you. Spirits are very real, and they do come, and many come to help, but some come to hurt. Some of you may have more ability than others to see and dream things, like Joseph the dreamer. The prophets in the Bible had this gift. Isaiah prophesied that Babylon would be overthrown in Isaiah chapter 13, and that Damascus would lose much of its wealth in Isaiah 17, and that the rivers of the Nile would dry up in Isaiah 19, and Jeremiah prophesied that Babylon would be destroyed in Jeremiah 25. And even Daniel acknowledged the Most High for all that was revealed to him in prophecy. He said in Daniel chapter 2, verse 20, Blessed be the name of the Most High forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. He changes the times and the seasons. He moves kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. Verse 22, he reveals the deep and secret things. He knows what's in the darkness and the light dwells within him. That's why if you do have the ability to dream dreams and see visions of things, do not turn to magic and dark things for understanding. Know that revelation comes from the Most High, who also knows the dark side of the spirit realm more than we do. So we are to dwell in the light of the Most High, as Daniel said, and be protected by his light. We are not to open ourselves up to witchcraft and magic for understanding. Many prophets had the gift of prophecy not to be confused with magic and witchcraft. This ability allows them to foresee bad events coming or even detect a bad spirit in those around them. This type of gift is God-given. It's innate within the Holy Spirit. It's built into it. There's nothing you can do about it, but it is of the Holy Spirit. And for those of you with this gift, know that every good and perfect gift comes from the Father. If it's good and if it's perfect, and if it's from him, you are protected in it. These commands are referring to what is not of him, what is not good, what is not protected, and what can hurt you. Let's look at law number 60, not to be superstitious. Law number 61, not to go into a trance to foresee events. Law number 62, not to engage in astrology. So for those of you who didn't know, astrology can be educational in terms of science, but if used in magic, it is considered witchcraft. If you're using it to try and predict something spiritual or even worse, worshiping the elements of astrology, the moon, the stars, the planets, etc., it is witchcraft. Law number 63, not to mutter incantations, talking about magic spells and chants of magic or charm. Law number 64, do not attempt to contact the dead. Why is this a law? Because it is possible to contact the dead, but you may very well find yourself in contact with a demon. That's why it's a law. It's for your own protection. Law number 67, not to perform acts of magic, which is very similar to Yodoni, but a very broad range of activities occurring in the pagan world. These are 10 laws that address the acts of magic, astrology and contacting the dead. Let's move on to a law that refers to child sacrifice. Law number 49, not to pass your children through the fire of Molech. Leviticus chapter 18 verse 21 says, and thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire of Molech. So the command here, ladies and gentlemen, is don't kill your kids, particularly in a ritual for a false god. Molech is an ancient Ammonite god, worshipped by Canaanites and Phoenicians, among others, in North Africa. Passing your child through the fire refers to child sacrifice by parents 
This practice is also mentioned in 2 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 3, and chapter 33, verse 6, and also in Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 31, and chapter 19, verse 2 through 6. Okay, so we're commanded not to sacrifice our children. Common sense, but believe it or not, some people need to hear it. Do not sacrifice your children for any reason. Single women, don't do it for a man who doesn't want kids. He can go. Single men, don't do it for a woman who doesn't want to raise kids. She can go. Don't sacrifice your children for a pagan god. Don't do it for the Illuminati. Don't do it to be free from responsibility. Just don't do it. Okay, so let's look at the rest of the laws that fall under idolatry and paganism, and I will return to discuss a few of them. I'm back, so let's look first at Law 52, which I've placed three asterisks by it, which means it can no longer be kept. The command is not to plant a tree in the temple courtyard. Obviously the temple is no longer, and we're no longer in the land, so this is one of those laws we can reflect on and understand why it is, because the temple was so set apart and so holy that its yard was not even to be used for planting or growing or any kind of landscaping. So it's a valid law, but we don't need to observe it today. Let's look at laws number 54 and 55. One of them is a repeat of the other. Law 54 says not to derive benefit from idols and their accessories. Law 55 says not to derive benefit from ornaments of idols. Idols and their accessories, ornaments of idols, same thing. One law stated twice in a slightly different way. We need to be careful of these types of laws. I don't know why Judaism added them, but they are excessive and most importantly, incorrect. The actual command is found in Deuteronomy 7, 25, which law number 55 is based on. So we will omit the other, which is law number 54. And the final one to look at is number 58. It says not to let idolaters dwell in our land. This law can no longer be kept because we ourselves are no longer in our land, which was promised and eventually given to us. Unfortunately, instead of making sure idolaters were not in our land, we became the idolaters and therefore fell out of covenant according to Deuteronomy 28. And that's why other nations were able to remove us from our own land. And that's how we became scattered. And that's why we are heeding to the commands today so that we may be back in right standing with the Most High according to our everlasting covenant. 
So far, we've reviewed 67 laws. We've seen five laws that need to be omitted because they were repeats or added by Judaism, seven laws which need to be changed to fit their scriptural reference, and three laws that can no longer be kept today. So although we've reviewed 67 laws so far, there were actually 62 true laws within them. That number 613 has now fallen to 608. I want to thank you guys for hanging in there with me. I've said before, it's a tedious work to do, and I'm sure it's tedious for you guys to study, but let's continue and stay committed to learning and obeying together. Stay tuned for more laws coming soon. Until then, Shalom. Yes, we've heard it all from our sister, Judea, and uh, we've gotten a better understanding on what the Most High requires from us as his children. And uh, for those of us that have been participating in things like psychics, magic, witchcraft, and child sacrifice. We've gotten a better understanding. We've known that all these things are abomination before the Most High, and we do not need to practice them. Just like last time, we had an exhibition in Spain, and the masquerade was introduced into it. And then the only reason they gave us is the intention behind it. For me personally, I don't judge people by their intention, but I judge them by their attitudes. That is my own way of analyzing people. Now, why I do not accept the theory of intention surrounding any action anybody carries out is this. The scripture says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The scripture says, it is not what goes inside you that defiles you, but what comes out of you. The scripture also says, the heart of man is evil. So, whatever your intention is, the attitude surrounding that intention is what I look at. Because this life is full of deception. And moreover, the Most High made it very, very clear to our ancestors that this land I'm about to give you, do not embrace the way of life of the people you will meet there. Do not embrace their way of life. Do not worship their gods. Do not embrace their culture. These things were specific instructions. So if you are saying, oh, it is because of the intention, that it is the intention to entertain. We have other means of entertainment. It mustn't be masculine. We have other means of entertaining our people because masculine entertainment is not part of our culture. And we all know that back then in Biafra land, there is no masquerade you see without a cane. They will flog you, they will even ask you for money. So there is no time they've done it and it is um, of something positive. No, those saying it is for economic reasons. You don't need to bring in something that the monster is against to raise money to take care of his own people. It is an insult. We are not restoring Biafra for economic reasons. There, there is something we all have not understood. The main reason why Biafra is to be restored is not because we want economic better life. No, it is because we need a place to call our own so we can worship the Most High the way He has ordained us to worship Him. That is the simplest truth about the restoration of Biafra. We can't get 
satisfaction, 100% satisfaction here on earth by the government or any person. But let us just have our freedom to worship the Most High the way He has called us to do. That is the essence of restoring Biafra. And that is why we must go back to Him in order for Biafra to be restored. So, intention of the masquerade is, for me, is nonsense. I don't believe that or buy into that idea. So, we mustn't embrace paganism in order to entertain our, our enemy and say it is tied attraction. If you don't use evil and call it good, it's just like money laundry. Just as the name goes, money laundry. You steal money from where you're not supposed to steal or take from. You're not channeling it into another source to present it as if it is good. That is the washing there. That is the laundry there. Present it as if it is not an illegal money, but illegal money. So just like now, just, just, that is just what this masquerade thing is. Taking the masquerade, which we know is not part of our culture, and it is associated to the to the dark kingdoms or to the kingdom of the dead. We are now bringing it into light and said, oh, we are just... Uh, using it to entertain ourselves we want to make it look good now okay you can take this masquerade that is evil now uh, you now use it with a good use it for a good purpose no an abomination is an abomination that's what the most i told the children of israel all those culture and way of life of those people they are abomination unto me you don't need to participate in them or embrace them for any reason and it is just the same way of taking the plate which you use for feeding your dog to serve your own child food to eat and you say it is the intention you have that your intention is to give your child food and not to bring your child to the level of the dog does it make sense must it use must you use the, the plate of your dog to give your child food? Is that the only plate you have? These are the critical questions we need to ask ourselves. So, for me, masquerading thing is out of it. We should not use it anymore. We have our cultural dance, different types. We can use them. They are too good. They are there. They work it. They are there. They, they have the gede or whatever. They are all, there are many. We can engage ourselves in those kind of things and dance very well. Not masquerade, please. I'm begging those in authority. They should reconsider their decision regarding masquerading in our events, maybe in subsequent events. We don't need them, please. We don't need them. And as we do, as we do this, may the Most High bless us. Those of us in Biafra land, I hope we are learning. I hope we are understanding. Nobody is um, against our own culture because our own culture is our own culture, which makes us unique. And that is what they call uh, Ejirimara. Or, uh, yeah, Ejirimara. So these are the things they use in identifying us as a people. But what people should use to identify us as a people should be things that should glorify the Most High and not things that will make people to doubt us if truly we are, the, we are the children of the Most High. So if you are involving yourself in the masquerade thing, in the witchcraft thing, or in the psychic or medium thing, going from one prayer house or the other, trying to make an um, inquiry into your future, if this person is the person you have to marry, right? or if this person or here you want to go is the right place for you to go. We don't need all those things. Why? Because the grace of the Most High in our life is sufficient. We have to look up to Him and Him alone. These laws we've treated, law 47 to law 67, still boils down 
to do not have any other God beside me. That is just what it's all about. Idolatry, paganism. So we should be very careful so that we don't become a victim of his anger. This thing we are discussing today regarding the laws of the Most High, they are not a matter of debate. They are a matter of what? Salvation. It will go a long way to talk about our salvation. So we should be very, very careful of the things we hear, we see, and we talk about. And even the things we do. May the Most High, the Father of our Messiah, Yahweh Shai, bless us and give us the wisdom we need now and forever. My name still remains Mazi Uzochuku. I will see you some other Shabbat. Shalom.